you shared over the years, we've known each other for many years, you shared some successes and failures. And of course, we won't mention who they are, but the importance of floor plan, um, first for how you move guests in and out for the experience. And if you could speak to that, because there's probably operators that, you know, whether they're putting together their equipment and they're buying used equipment, they can still really achieve a great customer experience with floor plan. And you being with Life Fitness, I mean, you have access to a plethora of, of tools. Could you impart some knowledge to maybe the, of course, the enterprise operator, but maybe the single operator, single location operator that's watching this, the importance of floor plan flow and that thought process? You know, the thing I look at when I'm working with a facility, whether it's a, a refresh or a brand new facility is, A, I, I want to look at um, not having it too packed. And especially if it's a new facility, I look at wanting to have everybody be able to get everything they need for a full body workout, mm -hmm. uh, first of all. Secondly, I want them to be able to come in and not feel like it's congested, overpacked, um, and usually with new facilities, I recommend leaving some open space so that it's a little airy, but they also then have room to add because with a new facility, being able to add equipment a year or two down the road after opening, it shows people that they value their feedback, right? It's about building an efficient workout environment. Yeah. So everything, and, and that that's in regard to also heavily... Um, your demographic. You know, I think that's really important is understanding your competition in regards to equipment layout. I want it to be functional. I want everybody to walk in the door and say, yep, I can do everything I need to do. The other side of it is, of course, of course, the, um, the experience from the moment they come in the door. So I always look at to the design side of um, a sales walkthrough. You know, I, I want them to be able to see kind of the hot topics, right? Cardio is always a hot topic. Um, and then their select rise and strength, um, their functional area, and then um, free weights, and then other amenities, right? On that, are you, from a sightline standpoint, are you a proponent of having cardio as the first piece of equipment that's in the sightline because of familiarity? Or are you more, let's have the strength up front? Or is that... Or is that dependent upon what that specific brand's focus is? What is your thought process on that? Man, that's a great question. Traditionally, cardio kind of sits up near windows where people can look outside, hmm. um, even if it has entertainment built in. One of the things I really enjoy about facility design, if I can, is to put the cardio in a place where the, it overlooks the strength area, not so much selectrize, but especially like the functional training, uh, where small group training is happening. Yeah. Branding. Um, you get, you get that multiple exposure to that. So it's like yeah. service, it's like service line optimization based on floor layout to get repeated, repeated exposures to a program. So I got to try Correct. that kind of thing. Right. Yeah. We've, we've, yeah, Sweet. we've talked about this. It's a, it's a passive sale. So if in my mind, if and what I've experienced is if people are just used to coming in and getting on a cross trainer or a treadmill for however much time, if they're seeing somebody like you out there having fun with multiple clients doing a small group class and then they they may inquire, it, it comes down to the experience is the bottom line. But people ask me too, like what can I do to improve it? And, you know, if they're looking at a full cardio update, for instance, that could, that's a lot of money. Sometimes it could be as simple as painting, um, changing some artwork, uh, changing some lighting. And sometimes, frankly, it can be just literally changing the layout of the floor yeah. with the same equipment. Same, so and, same, same equipment, but just shift things around could actually add some, some pop, uh, some pop, some some visual uh, changes yep. that might create some energy within the club. Yep, yep. I've I've literally done that with a couple of facilities where we got done moving things around, changed the layout, and people came in going, "Wow, we got new equipment." And and from a practical standpoint, for those that maybe choose that, was it a? Did you move strength back? Did you move cardio? Did you split? certain type of cardio machines and pair, you know, what was the move that you did with the same equipment to create that new energy, that new flow, that 
members noticed? In one occasion, we we wanted to kind of change just the dynamic of both the walkthrough and the functionality of the workout. So we we just kind of opened things up. Um, he had this in particular club had made a um, expansion. So we kind of opened the walkway, and then we changed just the placement and kept like body parts um, and things like that together. So it. Um, you know, it wasn't huge things. It wasn't like jungles. It was, you know, like hammer MTS, uh, selectorized equipment, things like that, that we moved around and, um, and just kind of changed, change the sight lines a little bit. What's that? You change the sight lines a little bit. Change the sight lines. Yeah. Yeah. So taller pieces we put together, um, and it wasn't bad before, to be honest, it was just more helpful to have it um, a little more open sight lines to this new space that he had just made. And, uh, and it, it, like I said, it, it was really wild to watch people come in and go, Oh, it's got new stuff. Like, that's, no, it's that's, not new. that's awesome.